I see you, Mustang, and your reputation precedes you. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, today, I'm gonna show you a cool trick you can do with your Tesla. This is a Model 3, but you can do this on any Tesla. So believe it or not, I'm actually sitting in the driver's seat, but you don't see a steering wheel because I installed a yoke. And at first I thought this thing was gonna be a gimmick and I didn't think I was gonna like it all that much. And I was like, yeah, I'll just try it out for a week or two and then put the regular wheel back on but I've really enjoyed driving with this thing. It really makes it more fun to drive. It feels more like a video game. I get so many compliments on it, mostly through drive-through windows. Everyone's always looking in the car saying, what is that? You know, it is awesome looking. So I've really enjoyed this a lot. All right, so today's video, we're gonna be discussing a few ways you can disable traction control on your Tesla. So why would you need to disable traction control? Well, the main reason is to get your car unstuck. If you are in snow or mud or sand and your car is stuck, traction control is going to put power to the wheels where it's feeling it slip. If you turn traction control off, you can now kind of rock the car in and out of a stuck spot. Well, there's two ways you can do that in a Tesla. The first way is enabling slip start. The second way is to put the car into dyno mode. Okay, so why do we need two different ways to disable traction control? What is the difference between slip start and dyno mode? Slip start is the main way that you would do this as a consumer. If your car ever gets stuck in snow and mud and sand, it's what's gonna help you rock the car out of your stuck spot. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute. What slip start does is it just reduces traction control. Now, the other way is to go into dyno mode and it does a lot more. Uh, not highly recommended for the end user like you to use, but I will show you how to do it and what it is used for. What dyno mode is gonna do is also reduce uh, traction control. It's gonna turn that off it's also going to take off uh, stability control. It's also going to disable any emergency braking. It's going to remove any lane departure avoidance features. It's going to disable regen braking. And it's also going to disable the hold to where if you need to come to a stop, you're going to have to use your brake pedal to come to a complete stop. So dyno mode is really just to put your car on a dyno to test for horsepower and torque. It is not intended to be driven on public roads or even the track because the minute you start steering and turning it, it will put the car into limp mode uh, if it notices the car is not on a dyno stationary with the wheels moving. If it sees that you're traveling, GPS will notify it that it's moving. If you turn the wheel at all, it'll know that you're not on a dyno because you don't need to turn a wheel on a dyno. So it will put your car into limp mode and that will basically render the car from being able to be driven at any noticeable speed at all. Uh, I think it limits it at 15 miles an hour. So you don't want to, you don't want to do that at all. So let's talk about slip start first. The way you do this is you go into pedals and steering and then scroll down to the very bottom and you'll see slip start used to help free vehicles stuck in snow, sand, or mud. So you turn that on, and now all of a sudden you get this message here, slip start enabled, and you see that TC with the uh, slash through it, that means traction control is turned off. So aside from getting your car unstuck, if you're wanting to do any burnouts or donuts or drift your car, slip start is the mode that you wanna be put in. Now, if you legitimately do want to dyno your car to test its horsepower and torque, then you need to go into dyno mode. And it really only works the best when you are on a dyno for this. So 
wouldn't be recommending trying this on public roads. I'm recording this video as of March 2022, and I'm on software version 11. So I'm going to show you the new way to go into dyno mode. The old way required you to hold down the uh, left turn lever and also the T, the Tesla T that used to be up at the top here. It's no longer there on the new software revision. So there is a new way to do this and I'll show you how. So the new way of going into dyno mode is you're gonna to go to the software tab here and you'll find the word model three for this car. If you have a model S or model X, whatever it is, the word model, you're gonna hold the D on the word model for a few seconds. And now you have a pop-up here to enter an access code. That code is going to be the word dyno test as one word, D-Y-N-O-T-E-S-T, -E and hit OK. And now we are in dyno mode. So you can see dyno mode is enabled. It's going to show you a bunch of different things that it's doing, stability controls disabled. Actually, it'll list them all here if I go to the alarms. So yeah, traction control disabled, dyno mode enabled, do not drive, stability control disabled, automatic emergency braking is disabled. So yeah, this is not recommended to drive the car on streets like this. And in fact, it really won't let you. Um, as soon as you start putting it into gear, if it notices that you're turning the wheel at all, it will put you in limp mode and you'll be disabled to, to go anything past 15 miles an hour. While I have it in dyno mode, let me go ahead and put it in reverse and see if I can turn the wheel and show you how it disables it. All right, so I've got it in dyno mode. Back it up here. Let me turn the wheel. Speed limited to 15 miles an hour. Let me go ahead and put it in gear. Yeah, you can you can uh, floor it and it really won't go anything past 15 miles an hour at this point. It's really a weird feeling, but um, yeah, it, it just does not want you to drive. As you see right here, power reduced. Exiting and re-entering vehicle may restore operation. So that's gonna segue into my next topic of how do you get out of dyno mode? Well, you have to unbuckle your seatbelt, open the door, get out of the car, or at least raise your butt off off the seat uh, so the sensor doesn't pick you up as uh, sitting in the car. Uh, once you get back in the car, close the door, the car will be set back to normal and you won't have to worry about it again. Dyno mode, should you do it? Not in my opinion. You should only save that for if you actually dyno your car. If you're wanting to have some fun though, put it in slip start and give her a whirl. Ah, the smell of burning tires. Tires are expensive. I don't think I'm gonna do that again. So those are the two ways to disable traction control in a Tesla. If you learned something new, let me know. If you've got more information about this that you might find interesting or helpful, put it in the comments below. We'll talk about it. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.